Hello and welcome to Lark Ride. I've been starting to make some armor and in my opinion the basis for any armor is a gambeson or some padded under armor like this. So this is lightly padded. I don't like it too thick. Of course you could make it with much thicker padding. But this is a good place to start with any armor. No matter if you're a lone, wandering swordsman, only trusting in your skill with the blade, you don't want to be weighed down by lots of armor. Or you are an iron-clad warrior who wants to crush his enemies and see them driven before him. A gambeson is an essential part of your armor. So if you're interested, stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how I made this. Start by putting my template on some paper. This is a revised version for YouTube, slightly nicer than the one I used in the project. Need some measuring tape, a pencil, and I use my Taylor's triangle. And all I'm really doing here is making a pattern here that will make it easier cutting the fabric later on. And I use my trust break knife to cut the template out. The paper I'm using here is nothing special. It's a roll of packaging paper or something that I thought would make good material to make templates out of. Roll it up and time for the next piece. It's time to cut the fabric, so I need my tailor's scissors and some Taylor's chalk. This is my fabric for the outer layer, which is the heaviest black linen I could find. Could also use something like cotton. My last one was made from actual jeans fabric. Um, it needs to be tough, of course. But linen has the advantage that you can cook it when you're washing it and uh, it looks pretty nice, gives it the proper medieval optic you want. I just use my template, mark it down and then cut it out. This is the back piece. This is one of the front pieces and both of the front pieces are just variations of the back piece as you could see on my template. So I'm using this large angle rail here to go diagonally across. It gives me one of the front pieces. The second front piece has like a curve around the neck going to your shoulder and here I'm figuring out how to make it. 
and I actually made it a little bit different and the template a little bit higher. And these are the two pieces that will become the arms. And finally, the collar. I'm using safety pins to stick the gambeson together to test it out. What you should do after cutting out your first set of fabric to make sure it fits. But because I'm very confident, yeah, let's call it confident, I only tried it out after cutting out all of my fabric, but luckily it fit. So just pin together in a few critical places, try it on, and if it fits, you're good to go ahead. This is my second fabric, a much lighter linen fabric I will use for the lining, the inner lining of the gambeson. And I am again just using my template, mark it on the fabric with the tail chalk and cut it out. You see me using the piece, uh, the front piece of uh, fabric I cut out before to mark where this neck piece is going to go because that is not on the template. Again, cut it out. This is my padding. This is a 100% wool blanket I got from eBay. And it's uh, not the heaviest lining you could get, not the thickest, but you could use two or three layers of this if you want to go really thick. But you might run in trouble sewing this with the sewing machine. Next step is sewing the padding onto the outer layer of linen. For that purpose I pin it in place with some safety pins which will make it easier to sew together. Using my trusted old sewing machine and I'm using polyester yarn, nothing special. I got it on a wholesale in the local supermarket. And I'm just using a simple linear stitch and stitch all around the edge, but about 2.5 centimeters from the edge using markings on my machine because I need a bit of space I can cut in later and I'll tell you later why I did this. At the beginning and the end of each stitch go a big back and forth to secure the stitches. Take out all the safety pins. And because I was not happy I had sewn this together, it wasn't close enough to the edge, it wasn't aligned properly, so I ripped half of it part again, which is fairly simple if you have just a simple linear stitch. And then I went ahead and repinned it and restitched it to my liking. Now here I'm beginning to mark a pattern. 
I want to stitch on the front pieces, which will give you this checker pattern. And I'm using the corners of the piece for reference. From there I just use my hand to measure how wide each line needs to be. Old school. But you could also use your measuring tape and make references on your table so the pattern will be identical on each piece. But I decided to use the corners of each piece as reference points and go from there. So each piece has a slightly different checker pattern. But I think it turned out pretty good. Finally the color and I will not do a checker pattern on that. Now that I got all of my pieces stitched it's time to cut back the padding at the edges. That's why I left 2.5 centimeters of room to expose the outer fabric which will make it easier, way easier to sew. You don't have to sew through your padding at each seam. It's much easier on your sewing machine. Of course you could cut the padding a little bit smaller to begin with, but for me it's easier to do it this way. Now that I got all of my pieces, it's time to sew them together and I will start right there at the shoulder joint and only there sew the two front pieces to the back piece. So I go back and forth at the beginning at the end and I go back all across and then zigzag the edge that keeps it from coming undone and you will see me doing double stitches on all of my seams to make it a bit stronger. Also just for this shoulder seam I put it to one side and then stitch across it again to give it a bit of extra strength. Now it's time for the arms. I fold this piece and mark the middle. And the middle has to go at the shoulder seam. Here I'm trying to figure out how to actually stitch this together. This can be a bit tricky. So I take my time figuring this out and it's a bit easier with the padding marking your inner surfaces to make sure all your seams are on the inside. I will stitch it both ways from the shoulder joint where I made my marking on the arm and from there I go down in both directions and that makes it easier to keep it symmetrical. And again I'm doing two sets of stitches to give it a bit of extra strength. And then use a zigzag stitch to keep 
the stitches and the fabric from unraveling. Now before I close it up, I want to pin it together with safety pins again and try it on because with the padding on it, the fit is slightly different and I was worried that the arms would become too small, but they fit alright. Now it's time to look where the color supposed to go. So I'm figuring this out as I go along. And I'm marking down from where to where I want my color to go. That's why there's just an X on the pattern or the length of the color. So make it a bit longer than you think it's going to be. And then, while sewing it on, you cut it to length, so it's a perfect fit. So I'm going along the neck part here. Make sure all of my seams on the inside. Cut it to length, cut padding back again. Then it's time to finish the seam, double stitches again, and then zigzagging again. Now that the color is on, it is time to close up the sides. So I will make a seam all the way from the arm down to the bottom end. And I will make especially sure to make it good and strong in the armpit because the armpit is under a lot of stress, especially on a gambeson. So I'm giving it a few extra stitches to make it that bit stronger. I try to make sure to sew this together evenly so it fits together just fine at the bottom as it did at the top of the arm. Double stitches again and again I do a zigzag pattern at the edge to keep it from unraveling. Now it's time to secure all of the loose edges for that purpose. I fold them over once. Twice would be better, but I didn't leave enough room for that. And then I sew it down with a simple linear stitch. You see me doing it at the arm, but I do it with all the exposed edges to keep those from unraveling. Now that this is done, it's time to sew together the inner lining on its own, completely separate. And here you see me using the outer lining and padding to mark how long and from where to where the collar has to go on the inner lining. 
now that it is soon together completely, it's time to marry the inner and outer lining. So I put these together and make sure that all of the seams are facing each other so they won't be visible on the finished gamson because they will be inside where the padding is. And I sew together the inner and outer fabric at all of the edges, but not anywhere else. Now that it is sewn together, it is time to sew on my patches to keep it closed. Here I'm just figuring out where those have to go. So I'm checking how I wear this, where this top corner goes, and also where I want my lowest button to be, and I want it just below the waistline. With those two markings, I use measuring tape to make sure my third button will be in the middle. I'm using some cardboard to make a small template. Make sure it's symmetrical. And I cut out six patches of this leather I scavenged from an old couch, which is more than good enough for this application. Always be on the lookout for old couches and the like, because you can make a lot of good stuff for live action out of those. I put two holes in there with my hole punch. And also mark down a line on there. I want to center this patch on. Now it's time to sew it on. I've got these waxed saddler's yarn and a pretty big saddler's needle. And I make a simple knot at the end of the yarn, which will keep it from pulling through all of the way. And I just stitch through there. What I do, I go through the leather and I go a bit sideways, not a lot, but I go back through the same hole I made in the leather or nearly enough the same hole I made in the leather and that will make it a bit easier to sew, secure the patch safely and give you a nice set of linear stitches at the front. There are other possible methods to close your gamson. You could sew on a couple of buttons or put some leather straps and buckles on it, but I decided to sew these leather patches on it and with those I will secure leather laces and just lace it together in three places, which is uh, quite pleasant looking, I think, and it's a very primitive, cheap and easy to repair solution. You don't have to buy any buckles that also might be uncomfortable to wear under my chainmail. Here I'm using 20 times time compression so I can actually show you how I sewed on one of the patches 
and at the end I make a few knots in it then use a gas lighter to burn off the ends because this is a synthetic fabric, a synthetic yarn it gives me a little knob of plastic that will not come undone anytime soon and the rest is a good exercise for an evening of Netflix or something it takes a really long time to sew this behind here I'm cutting out two rectangle pieces I measured before I want to put them around the arm openings on the inside and outside like this and I do this because it will look pretty good not because I misjudged the length the arms needed to be and I'm missing like five centimeters to cover my arms that's not it at all I do it because it looks good so this shows you if you make mistakes in your project it doesn't have to be a bad thing it can lead to something that is better and more interesting than what you had originally envisioned or at least that's how I like to think about this I just sew this on there like I did the patches before make sure with every stitch that it is in the right place and after that I put the ends of it together with like a cross stitch I go all the way to the end and then cross all the way back then again I will knot it off and burn the ends and here I'm cutting my leather laces to length so I need a bit of length to knot it on and then a bit of length so I can lace it together with the other side and now I fiddle it through the holes I made before and I'm using three millimeter thick synthetic leather yarn which is pretty tough and good for this application and I secured with a simple knot but this is a knot that a pair of laces goes through so let me show you how this knot is done a bit closer to the camera so I make a loop that goes through the patch and I just do a simple knot with this pair of laces that secures it pretty good almost done just put a bit of oil on the leather and if you want to wash this use a program with a lot of water because the gambeson will soak up a lot of water and if you put leather on it wash it at 30 degrees Celsius if you didn't put any leather on it you can boil it at 60 or 95 degrees Celsius the linen can take it and that finishes the build if you like this video and want to see more like it please subscribe to my channel like the video and let me know in the comments below thanks and goodbye